Okay, so last time when we looked at this, I asked you to predict what might happen next in the story. Uh, Toothless had just met Newt's Breath and Hookfang, who were Stoic's hunting dragons. Um, if you remember, they were both the size of a leopard and were about as delighted by his arrival as a couple of giant cats. wonder if they ate him. We must wait, purred Hookfang menacingly, until we are alone and then we can give you a proper welcome. He gave a vicious swipe at Toothless with one paw. A claw like a kitchen knife just nicked Toothless on the bottom and the little dragon howled, jumping into Hiccup's tunic until only his tail was poking out of the neck. Get out of here, you dragons, yelled Stoic, and Newt's breath and hook fangs slunk out muttering obscene dragon curses in dragonese under their breath. As I was saying, said Stoic the Vast. Uh, can you remember who that is? That's Toothless's dad, isn't it? The uh, chief of the Viking clan, or clan. That's how to deal with dragons. Stoic was looking at Toothless with uncharacteristic anxiety. Son, he said hoping there might be some sort of mistake. Is this dragon actually your dragon? Yes, father, said Hiccup. It's very, um, mm, it's very, uh, small, isn't it? Said Stoic. He was not generally an observant person was Stoic, but even he could not fail to notice that this dragon really was remarkably Minute. Uh, and it hasn't got any teeth, son, he said. There was a really awkward silence until fish legs of all people came to Hiccup's rescue. That's because it's an unusual breed, sir. A unique and um, really violent species called the Toothless Daydream. Distant relations of the monstrous nightmare, you know but far more ruthless and so rare they are practically extinct. Really, said Stoic, surveying the toothless daydream doubtfully. Looks like a common or a garden dragon to me. Ah, but with respect, chief, carried on fish legs. He's being remarkably brave, isn't he? That's where you're wrong. To the amateur eye, and indeed to its prey, it looks exactly like a common or garden dragon. But if you look a little closer, the characteristic daydream marking, and fish legs pointed to a wart on the end of Toothless's nose, marks it out from the more ordinary breed. By Thor, you're right, said Stoic. And it's not just your average Toothless daydream either. Fish legs was getting a bit carried away now. This particular dragon is of royal blood, no less. No said Storic. He was very impressed because he was actually quite a snob. Yes, said Fishleg solemnly. Your son has only gone and burgled the offspring of King Daggerfangs himself, the reptilian ruler of Wild Dragoncliff. Oh, now there's your challenge. Can you draw King Daggerfangs, the reptilian ruler of Wild Dragoncliff? And send it in to me, please. Can't wait to see that. The royal daydreams tend to start out small, but they grow into creatures of impressive, even gargantuan size. Just like you, eh, Hiccup, said Stoic, giving a great laugh and ruffling his son's hair. Stoic's tummy gave a rumble, like a distant underground explosion. Time for a little bit of supper, boys, I think. Clear this mess up, will you? Thanks, fish legs, said Hiccup. You were inspired. Inspired. Not at all, said Fishlegs. I owed you one after setting you up for that fight with Snotlout. Father will find out at some point anyway, though, said Hiccup. Not necessarily. Look at all that talking you were doing with a toothless daydream here. That was incredible. It was completely unbelievable. I have never seen anything like it. You'll be training him in next to no time. I was talking to him all right, sighed Hiccup. 
but he did not listen to a word I said. When he was going to bed that night, Hiccup didn't want to leave Toothless in front of the fire with Newt's breath and Hook Fang. Can I take him to bed with me? He asked Stoic. A dragon, said Stoic, is a working animal. Too much hugging and kissing will make him lose his vicious streak. But Newt's breath is going to kill him if I leave him alone. Newt's breath gave an appreciative growl. It would be my pleasure, he hissed. Of course, only Hiccup could understand what he said, because Hiccup is the only person that can understand Dragonese. Nonsense, boomed Stoic. He gave Newt's breath a friendly cuff around the horns. He just wants to play. That sort of rough and tumble is good for a young dragon. Makes him learn to stick up for himself. Hook Fang extended his claws like flick knives and drummed them on the hearth. Hiccup had to think fast. He pretended to say goodnight to Toothless, but smuggled him under the bedroom, into the bedroom under his tunic. You must be quiet, he told Toothless as they climbed into bed, and the dragon nodded. In fact, he snored so loudly the entire night, but Hiccup didn't care. Hiccup spent the whole of the winter on Burke in various states of very cold, ranging from very chilly to absolutely freezing. At night, too many layers were considered sissy, so he generally lay awake for a couple of hours until he'd shivered himself into a light sleep. The fact that he was kept awake by Toothless did not worry him one bit. Now, though, as Hiccup stretched his feet out against Toothless's back, he felt waves of heat coming off the little dragon. Gradually, they crept up his legs and warmed his freezing cold stomach and heart, even going all the way up to his head, which hadn't been truly warm for almost six months. Even his ears burned contentedly. It would have taken the snoring of six strong dragons to have woken Hiccup. So deeply did he sleep that night. And there he is. Hopefully you can see that there. There you go. Fast asleep in his little bed. And that's where we'll leave it for today. Hope you enjoyed that part of the story. And on Monday, we'll be moving on to chapter eight which is when all the hard work begins that's when they start the training take care gco have a nice weekend bye bye